Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So AI is getting a lot of attention in Washington. You know, the tech giants have come to tell us how to shape new laws that will advance their business models. But laws already exist governing some aspects of AI. Earlier this year, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau reminded us that, quote, existing legal authorities apply to the use of innovative technologies just as they apply to other practices. In other words, breaking the law with fancy new tools is still breaking the law. So I want to talk about one of those laws today. A biased home appraisal can be a terrible financial blow to a family. One study of mortgage approval algorithms showed that in 2019, lenders were 80% more likely to deny home loans to black applicants than to white applicants with similar financial characteristics. In June, the CFPB proposed a rule that would require mortgage lenders to have quality controls in place that would ensure that the algorithms that appraise home loans are not discriminatory. So, Ms. Coity, you're an expert in consumer protection and financial inclusion. Does CFPB have legal authority to implement such a rule? Thank you, Senator Warren. I join you completely in the importance of access to home ownership. It is a wealth building opportunity. And yes, I do agree that the CFPB does have these authorities. You are correct. There's been research by the Urban Institute. Fannie, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac have also both recently found home appraisals systemically undervalue homes in majority black neighborhoods and the CFPB, both under the Fair Housing Act and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act are able to apply appraisals, uh, are, are able to cover uh, the appraisals uh, as reflected by federal regulatory guidance, which dates back all the way to 1994. Okay, so I, I think what this says is the lender cannot discriminate and then claim AI made me do it. Absolutely. Uh, the lender remains legally responsible for outcomes that violate the law. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Similarly, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, which you just referenced, and its current law, says that when lenders decide who gets credit and who doesn't, they can't discriminate on the basis of age, race, sex, national origin, religion, family status, or use of public assistance. And that's true whether they do it face-to-face -face or they do it through AI. So, Ms. Coity, has the CFPB identified other potential violations of consumer protection laws involving AI? So again, the consumer protection laws are in place and agnostic on whether or not it's a complex technology that's being used or a human decision. And they do have the authorities to take action around discriminatory behaviors as such. Okay. So in other words, uh, the Bureau is saying that if big banks like Wells Fargo, um, it, that they will be held responsible if they use AI to cut costs and as a result end up misleading consumers who are just trying to resolve a dispute with the bank or ask for advice on some of the most critical financial decisions of their lives. You know, good for the CFPB, there is no AI exception to our consumer protection laws. So this is another example of why the CFPB's work is so essential. Over the past 13 years, the CFPB has returned $17 billion directly to American families that have been cheated by financial institutions, money that otherwise would have stayed in the pockets of those Wall Street executives. I am proud of the work that the CFB PB has achieved, and I look forward to working with my colleagues to support their work in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.